Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Valpo Football Weekly, along with head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichow. And Dave, uh, what a great Saturday it was. Uh, it was a chilly day, but a decent crowd, and you guys gave them uh, really a great show. Good on all three phases of the, of the football, and, and a real impressive uh, win over Jacksonville. I'm sure you're pleased. Yeah, it was a great team victory. You know, we really came out strong. We wanted to come out aggressive. Uh, we elected to, to take the football. First play, first offensive snap, rather, of the game. We're able to go deep to, to Griffin Norberg for a big touchdown. And then the defense comes out with a big stop, and the offense responds with another big drive, and we're up 14 nothing, And and that set the tone for the day and, and really kind of put them playing catch-up for the remainder of the football game. It was really good to see Chris Duncan, maybe three or four, four deep balls that were just perfectly thrown. And and you know, he's kind of had an up-and-down season, mm -hmm. and... and, and it was a really good sign, I thought, that that first pass kind of, like you said, sort of sets the tone. Right. And, and I've seen teams do this before, where they, they throw deep on the very first play of the game, perhaps for many reasons. Maybe talk about that. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we wanted to be aggressive, number one. Uh, number two, we did get the coverage that we were hoping to get. It was a great read by Chris. It was a uh, great protection by the offensive line, and, and it just, it, it all clicked. And, and uh, you know, Chris did a great job the entire football game, great with his reads, great with his... Uh, throws, you know, he wasn't perfect, but he seems to be getting a little bit better with each passing game and, and uh, you know, throwing for over 300 yards and not turning the football yeah. over, that was huge. You did challenge the offensive line, I think, in the last couple of weeks. Let's, let's start running the football a little bit. And I, Elias Early had his best day, but I thought the offensive line maybe in general had their best game. Absolutely. You know, we did a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, but our offensive line stepped up, gave Chris plenty of time uh, on his drop back uh, play action game, uh, really, uh, he finished the game without a single sack and running the football, it was one of our most efficient days. Again, not a lot of just big 30 yard, 40 yard runs, but we had a lot of seven to, to 12 yard type runs and, and uh, you know, the, a lot of that credit goes uh, to our offensive line. You've had a lot of guys on the defensive side in and out of the lineup because of injuries. Right. The one well, there may be a couple, but one real steadying influence you've had on the back end has been Jamari Booker. Yes. And what a ball game he had he on did. Saturday. And he, as the season has progressed, has become an outstanding football player. Yeah, he really has played well, uh, gotten better as the season's gone on, stayed healthy, which you can't say that about just about any other uh, player on defense. Uh, and he really seems to shine against these type of triple option teams. He's a very uh, aggressive player, a great tackler. Uh, he stepped up, got the big interception, obviously, uh, as well uh, at the start of the fourth quarter. And, and uh, he's playing some really good football for us right it now. It is exciting going forward. He's a guy who'll be back next season. Then another guy we saw more of this game than we have in the past is Bailey Gessinger. Yes. And get going deep and trying to get him the ball in space. Uh, he becomes an extra weapon when he's out on special teams, but now I think we'll get to see him more and more on offense. Yes, with Gene Rene uh, injuring his uh, shoulder and, and not likely to return for, for this coming game here, you know, we, we have looked uh, to Bailey. Uh, he certainly does possess that speed. He's become a, a better, more complete wide receiver with each passing year, and, and now is really his time to shine. And, and Parker Fox as well is a guy who's picked up some slack, and uh, he caught a big touchdown pass, and, and, uh, and he continues to improve. Uh, in the latter stage of his, of his career as well. As terrible it has been with all the injuries, it has allowed a lot of younger guys or even some juniors or maybe we're second teamers and sophomores were second teamers to get action this year that's going to help you going forward. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no question. And, and especially with the, the red shirt rules being as they are, we do have some older guys, uh, you know, guys like Jimmy Seawald who played in four contests this year. And with the change in the rules, you can play in four games and still get a red shirt year. So we will walk out of this season uh, with more red shirt possibilities than we've ever had before. All right, one more opponent uh, on the schedule, and that's Stetson, a team which has certainly played better than their preseason projection. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, they're doing an outstanding job on offense. They really have stepped up. Uh, their quarterback, McGovern, is, is playing great football. He's making plays with his feet. He's making great throws. They've got an outstanding uh, tight end who really plays the majority of the game at a wide receiver position, uh, but he gets about 10 catches a game, so we're really going to have to know where, where he is. But they're doing a solid job of running the football as well, and they've got another wide receiver who's a threat uh, as well. So it's a little bit of a pick your poison. They're doing a good job of playing balanced football on offense, and, and that's been one of their keys to their success. All right, good luck this Saturday. All right, thank you.
For head coach Dave Cicchini, I'm Todd Eichau. Thanks for joining us on Valpo Football Weekly.